I've titled this study The Cross and the Kingdom because the symbol of an empty cross is central to the Christian faith. It reminds us that Christ was physically raised to life from death and this has significant implications for the subject of the kingdom as we're about to see. So again, I'll read Luke 17, verses 20 to 25. Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed, nor, they say, Look, here it is, all there. For behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. And he said to the disciples, The days are coming, when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look there, or look here. Do not go out or follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Both the Pharisees and Jesus' disciples expected Jesus to usher in the kingdom of God immediately. Roughly speaking, they expected Jesus to kick out the Romans, to kick out the Roman oppressors of Israel. They expected the re to Jesus to return Israel to the glorious conditions that they enjoyed under King David in the past. They were right to expect something like this. This was what God promised them in the Old Testament through the prophets. For these prophets spoke of a person, the Messiah, coming to establish God's people in the promised land, the place where the promises of God would be fulfilled. In his teaching, Jesus taught that such prophecies would not be fulfilled until he returned. And the further revelation given to the apostles, like John in the book of Revelation, this further revelation sheds more light on what believers have to look forward to in this thing called the kingdom of God. If you want to we look back about that, you can watch the video titled The Coming of the Kingdom again, just to remind yourself. Or you can just read what it says in Revelations chapter, chapters 19 to 22. And it gives a good description, a symbolic description, of what the kingdom of God will be like. But if I am honest, I, and many like me, are probably more familiar with simply talking about heaven, the place that our immaterial soul goes to when we die. We prefer talking about heaven than we do talking about the kingdom of God. It's simpler, easier, and yet the Bible is clear. Heaven is not the permanent home of the believer. Heaven is not the end of the story. Jesus himself said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. In the Old Testament, God spoke these words through the prophet Isaiah. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. That's in Isaiah 65 verse 17. Peter also, in the letter of 2 Peter, chapter 3, spoke of looking forward to the fulfillment of such a promise. He said, in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness dwells. If you combine these verses with other verses in the New Testament, the picture we are left with is basically this. At death, our immaterial soul goes to be with God in heaven when we die. Meanwhile, our cremated or buried body remains on earth. When Jesus returns from heaven to earth, the souls of believers will return with him. 
then our souls will we, we will reunite with our bodies with our bodies and will live forever in the new heaven and earth that God creates aka the kingdom of God it is at this moment when our souls and bodies unite that Paul's famous words in 1 Corinthians will be fulfilled 1 Corinthians 15 verse 50 I declare to you brothers and sisters that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable listen I tell you a mystery we will not all sleep that's a picture of the temporary nature of death we will not all sleep but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet that is at the last major event in earthly history at Jesus' return at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed for the perishable the perishable body must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality just to give you a bit of context in 1 Corinthians 15 Paul is talking about the centrality of Jesus' resurrection to the Christian faith if Christ did not rise from death then we can have no hope that the same will happen to us but because Christ was physically raised from the dead we can have confidence that our material bodies will also be raised as well when Jesus returns when Jesus returns from heaven to earth our physical bodies will be raised and transformed transformed in such a glorious way that we'll be able to enjoy eternity in them and our eternities will be spent in the new creation that God creates the new heaven and earth the physical kingdom of God this might be a lot to take in if this is new to you and because it's a lot to, to get our heads around I find it easier as a preacher to simply talk about heaven and leave it at that so why spend this time talking about the kingdom of God rather than just talking about heaven why this focus on a new heaven and earth why insist that Christians will enjoy eternity in physical but transformed bodies maybe an analogy will help imagine a child phones their father from school telling them that they've got no money or food to eat at lunch what does the child want to happen they want their dad to immediately arrive with some physical food or if not or if not that they at least want their dad to promise that he's going to prepare chips and ice cream ready for when they get home they may have to wait but at least their hunger won't be ignored forever but imagine the child phones their dad tells them that they've got no food no money for lunch and their dad replies don't worry when you get home from school I have bought you a new PlayStation 5 to play with is the child pleased well yes a PlayStation 5 sounds great but it does seem a little bit like the father is dismissing their physical hunger he seems to be ignoring the issue and making out that it is something unimportant in much the same way if all we do is talk about heaven it can give the impression that God does not care about our physical bodies that God does not care about the suffering believers may experience in their earthly lives it's as if we're saying this don't worry your earthly suffering it's only temporary at least you can put it behind you when you die earthly injustice bodily pains physical suffering none of them really matter 
You may be hungry now, but God's got a PlayStation 5 waiting for you in heaven to play with. If the promise of the Bible was simply that our non-physical souls get to be with God in heaven, it might seem that God is dismissing all that affects our physical earthly lives as unimportant. But what does the pattern of the cross teach us? Jesus said, first the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. But what happened after his physical death? Jesus' physical death was followed by a physical resurrection. Jesus' physically forsaken body was not left in the grave while Jesus' soul went to be with God in heaven. Instead, God saw that Jesus had God saw what Jesus had physically experienced and then responded in a physical way. God put right the injustice done to Jesus by raising him from the grave. God paid attention to Jesus' forsaken body and brought it to life again. This pattern of physical death followed by physical resurrection, will also happen to every believer when Jesus comes again. For God's answer to our physical death is to return us to physical life in the kingdom of God. So, whilst the fact that our immaterial souls go to be with God in heaven when we die, that's great, that's wonderful, but it's also good to remind ourselves that our physical bodies will one day be raised to life when Jesus comes again. It's good to remind ourselves that our transformed bodies will enjoy life in a physical place called the kingdom of God or the new heaven and earth. Such a hope can give real hope to believers whose enjoyment of God's creation in this life has so severely been affected or restricted by something that affects their physical body. They can know that they will one day enjoy life free of bodily pains. This, this hope about the physical kingdom and a physical body can give hope to believers whose earthly situation is being characterised by mostly suffering, and so they've never really experienced anything good on earth. They can know that one day they'll experience life as it was meant to be. You know, they may have never enjoyed chips and ice cream, but one day they will. This truth about the physical kingdom of God can give hope to believers who have only ever known what it's like to live under the rule of oppressive kings. They can know that one day they'll be part of a kingdom where the king actually cares for them and seeks their good. A king who will establish justice, even though they may have not experienced justice in their earthly life. <laughs> this hope about the physical kingdom of God can give believers hope who have given up those who have given up physical things because of, because of their faith, and they might wonder in this life if they've made the right choice. But they can know that all they've missed out on physically in their earthly lives will be made up in the kingdom of God as they get to experience something better. The Bible's teaching about the kingdom of God shows that God cares about the things that affect our physical bodies and the things that affect our earthly lives. The Bible's teaching about the kingdom of God shows that God will answer such issues, the issues that affect our physical bodies and our earthly lives. For every one of God's people will get to enjoy eternal life in a physical place, in a physical body. A physical body not affected by earthly limitations or pains. A physical place that can be enjoyed free from the frustrations and difficulties that so often torment our lives on this earth. 
God's word about the kingdom of God is very good news indeed.